Uh, hello to you who have uh, never been to my small YouTube channel. Uh, welcome. Welcome back uh, to you if uh, you have already seen a few episodes of my, on my small YouTube channel. My name is Isabel. I am from France. I have three sons who have left the house more or less since uh, last year. Uh, I have three cats, some say it's related, and I'm meeting from France. Um, I'm uh, uh, doing this uh, YouTube podcasts in English because I want to maintain uh, my English. I have lost a lot of my English, even though some of you are very, very nice to tell me it's okay uh, in the comments down below. but. Um, uh, I was very fluent when I lived in the United States, and that was 30 years ago. So um, even though I can read, write, and understand English as uh, when I was over there, my talking is a bit gone, so I hope that practicing at least once a week uh, talking in English for this YouTube podcast will help me keep uh, my English. Um, so my channel, I have two um, main uh, series that I have organized into uh, uh, playlists. Uh, you can find them in the channel uh, playlist. Uh, one of them is the Bully News that I'm trying to bring you every other week. Uh, it's my own take, my own eyes uh, on what has happened for uh, the last two weeks in the fiber, knitting, crocheting, wool, and other fibers um, community. And every other week, so that's going to be this week, I'm talking more about my own knitting adventures um, on a more traditional way that you can find elsewhere uh, on the internet. And I have the idea of a third series, but that will need a lot of work before I bring the podcast to you. So I'm thinking, I have to do some thinking over that because uh, my time is not, uh, I'm working full time, so I don't have enough time. So maybe, maybe I can bring you that series maybe once a month if I have enough time to do the research beforehand and, and of course uh, film the video. So if this sounds good to you, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, today we are going for uh, my knitting adventures. So, so first of all, uh, what I'm wearing, I very often forget to talk about all the things I'm wearing. And I want to talk about um, the cool jacket that I wore in another podcast and I forgot to talk about it. It's a... Uh, a uh, jacket that is a uh, pattern from Neringa Ruke. It's like a bomber jacket. If I stand up, you can see it's a little cropped. It's cold today, so um, this is why I'm wearing it on top of other things. And as every YouTuber that is sitting somewhere, I'm in my sweatpants. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, um, so the cool jacket from Neringa Ruki. I knitted last year from um, uh, yarn that I had got the year before when I was in the Pyrenees. So this yarn is a very, very, very rustic yarn. Um, I think it's going to go softer as I wash it. But I, as I say, I do not wash very much my knits. Uh, this yarn at least the mill where I bought it, called it, uh, called it Burel, B-U-R-E-L. This is the name of a sheep breed uh, that gives this yarn and they don't dye it. Uh, so uh, if you look at it, it's plied. I think there is uh, two plies in this one. If, I, if I'm trying to open it, I think... You can see there are two, two main, two main um, strands of yarn. It's very rustic. Um, you have the white part, it's part of the 
a color of the sheep. They don't, they don't dye the yarn, you know, <laughs> there is, when you need it, you can find bits of hay and other things in it. It's, it's very rough. So the cool jacket called for, uh, I don't recall uh, which kind of yarn. I'm going to check it very quickly here. I have my notes before my eyes. So that's why I'm looking down from time to time. Uh, well, it was uh, uh, suggested to uh, better knit cool wool. Uh, it's super bulky yarn. It was suggested uh, to knit it with uh, US 17, so that's 12 centimeter needles. So that's what I did. I used uh, 12 centimeter needles, but I doubled, I doubled the strands. Uh, so it's uh, it smells. I, I, I'm sorry, uh, you can't. I, I, there is no odorama <laughs> in YouTube. I, I I wish there was. I wish there was because it smells like clean wool, clean sheep in the barn. <laughs> That's what it smells like. It's, it's very nice. Now the jacket smells my own perfume, but uh, anyway. So there is a bit of sun, so you can see better maybe the detail here. I I I post a picture of uh, uh, the jacket uh, itself. It's a very nice pattern, a, a bomber jacket. I cropped, uh, I cropped the sleeves a little bit. So I, I, I did everything the pattern called for, except for the color. If I was to do it again, and maybe I, I can do it again, you know, I, I, I would make it a bit longer, but I don't know. I don't know. It's it really the style of the jacket and of the pattern, and I followed. I followed it. The only one thing I did not follow was for the color, because I do not like when jackets stretch and go down, and you always have to bring them up on your shoulders. I really don't like that. So what I did is knit double of the uh, color. Um, double of the color uh, um, length and, and knit it uh, so that, uh, you know, you can sit like this and you don't see uh, where I uh, sew it, excuse me, so it, you don't see where, where it is. And, uh, you know, you can sit on my shoulders and not move. This is what I prefer. So um, I still have uh, five skins left of this maybe this way because the sun is uh, today it, it it it's okay here the weather is okay in france uh, we we for the past few past few days um we are expecting a lot of rain for this uh, weekend so um maybe i don't know but for today there is a bit of sun um, I have five five skins left. You know, it's not even you know. I I, I boil it up whenever I want to knit it. Um, I think I'm gonna knit a vest with it. I may even even have enough to find a pattern with short sleeves. I do not know what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna knit, knit the rest of it. And uh, uh, when I went to the Pyrenees, when I saw. Uh, this yarn, I already had the pattern in mind. It's it's very often the way it goes. I have a pattern in mind, and I'm, you know, waiting for some yarn to cross my attention, and uh, that would fit for uh, what that would be a good fit for this pattern, and and then I get it. So what I liked a lot is a bit of the detail you can see here. There is one row of. Um, uh, garter stitch in the stockinette portion uh, on top of the uh, sleeves and on top of the back and the front. You know, it it, 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 it uh, continues here. It's a raglan uh, construction. It's top down, so no sewing. And uh, you know, you go back and forth once uh, you've separated for the sleeves and. And uh, that's it. It's a, it was a very quick knit because with a 12 millimeter needles, uh, it goes very fast. I enjoy it very, very much. I, I wore it at work yesterday. Even it looks very rustic. Um, the weather is a bit cold and uh, there was no rain. I don't like to wear my knits outside in the rain, even though 
um, the person in the meal who uh, it's it's a meal that do not work anymore and she kept it with the machines uh, for uh, like a museum you can visit uh, all all the installations her father was using using the meal before with yarn from um, local uh, ships but um, anyway uh, she doesn't run that any longer and she you know kind of have a regular yarn shop there with yarns from you know other parts of France and even Europe um, uh, rather than only their own production but anyway when I saw this yarn it was you know what I was what I was waiting waiting for for the cool jacket pattern so uh, then I I had the pattern and I I I had bought the pattern and then I got the yarn and I knitted it and it was a few days uh, if I can uh, go to my uh, Ravelry uh, project uh, you know it, it's it's uh, uh, it was less three weeks I knitted that in three weeks so. Um, uh, and you know, I had I had it at work yesterday. I I I, I was teaching yesterday, so uh, um, you know, even though it's very rustic, it's 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 uh, good enough. It's well enough. It I like the style enough to to wear it at work. The second thing I'm wearing today is my Sotobosk shawl. I love it. Whenever whenever I wear it. People always, there is always someone uh, to ask me where I bought, I bought the shawl. Of course, after that, I'm very proud to say I knitted myself. Uh, so it's a pattern from the uh, 52 weeks of shawls from Len Magazine. And the yarn is um, Ulysses, Ulysse, Ulysse from Dereron Natura in its, in the quartz colorway. It, you know, I have a, a, a red leather jacket. It goes very well with it. Um, that's when I wear it most of the time. And, uh, you know, it's it's very warm. It's very comfy. And today, before I started filming, it was a bit cold. Um, I try not to hit the house during the day uh, because I'm not there. I'm working. And, uh, uh, but, uh, um, to save a bit on uh, the energy, uh, the energy levels or expenses on my budget, um, gas prices have, you know, rocketed up in France. It's, it's a, a very high increase. I'm, I'm going to just pay. So, sorry, we got interrupted. Um, so. I'm not quite sure I recall what I was saying. Maybe I was saying uh, I'm trying to save on my energy uh, uh, part of my budget uh, because uh, the price has gone up a lot, a lot lately. I'm going to be paying a third more this year just for uh, the prices increases. So I'm trying to save on uh, heating my house and uh, so um, I wear my knits uh, whenever outside there is some sun that, that warms up the house and I, it's not too grey inside and cold and of course I will heat the house whenever it's uh, that way and at night, uh, you know, in the evening and early morning I, I heat the house but during the day whenever the sun is out uh, I'm trying not to heat the house and uh, uh, just wear um, knits that keep my warm, my warmth inside of me and make me happy. So these two go very well together to um, the pink part of the Sotobosk, uh, the quartz uh, yarn and the brown of the cool jacket. I think they go very well together. Okay, so that was a very long introduction, sorry. <laughs> um, I, I have not very much to talk about my knitting adventures right now because this is a long-term knitting that I'm, I'm committed to. So I'm not knitting anything else but uh, the scarves uh, for my two sons for uh, their Christmas. On a previous episode, 
I showed the beanie that I, the hyper knitting hat that I got for uh, my youngest son, Paulin. Paulin is a musician. Um, he's working on making the, uh, the first part and the last part of the uh, songs and the music at the beginning of the podcast. For now, it's, uh, he gave that to me and he said, you can use it, but it's not very good. It's not as I would like it to be. Anyway, I said, I'm not going to look for other music. I want yours. So whenever you have time, you work on it and I'll, I'll use it. So hello, this is Onyx my second cat uh, so uh so i've been work so i i knitted the um beanie for him the orange beanie the hyper knitting hat and uh, so uh i'm working right now on the two scarves that uh, uh, i'm knitting for my two eldest sons okay are you gonna come before the camera do you want to come no, you don't talk English, but maybe you can talk. Anyway, the two scarves, I'm knitting two at a time. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I started to uh, knit both because, you know, I don't like much to be knitting twice the same pattern. I get bored. Uh, unless there is a long time between the two times. I'm, you know, I'm currently knitting a second uh, Lorenzon sweater that is on the back burner for now with uh, the fishbone sweater also from Neringa Ruke. Uh, they are both on weight because I want to need those two scarves for Christmas. Uh, so uh, I'm knitting them two at a time. So they are both on the same cable. So here is uh, the uh, blue the blue scarf is, is for my uh, second son. So you see, I've knit a bit of it right now and, and it goes sideways. Maybe if I hold it that way, I don't want up. I don't want my uh, stitches to go away. Um, so, you know, it goes side, sideways and the slip stitches pattern um, uh, move on the scarf like you know, I like to imagine some kind of ridges on the sand or uh, some kind of, uh, yeah, ridges on the sand. That's what it's reminding me of. So anyway, so that's the first scarf that's in the blue. That's, so that's, that's for Theo, my second son. And the first, my first son is going to have the gray. And... Uh, uh, for uh, Samuel, my first son. So I'm using Fonti Polaire. The two uh, here is, uh, I hope you see it the, the right way. I, I, I think it's okay. Fonti, so the blue one, the color, the color where is number 649. And the gray one is 611 in Polaire. So, uh, last time I talked about, uh, I had some problems with uh, the yarn quantity that the pattern was calling for. Sorry, I forgot totally, I totally forgot to talk, you, to talk about uh, what uh, the pattern is. I'm very, very sorry. So, I, I've already shown you the book. It's from the Ensemble book from Amélie, Marie Amélie Designs. Uh, the scarf is called uh, Silata in the book, uh, but if you want to have the pattern on Ravelry, it's the Silen pattern. So I will link everything down below as usual. And uh, uh, I also have a blog, blog post uh, every time I post a video on YouTube and you can find um, more links, pictures that you can, you know, have a better look at because you can't place pictures in YouTube uh, description boxes or comments. So uh, I always put everything down below for the links. And if you want to read a bit more about it, and I have blog posts, blog posts, uh, show notes uh, in, in, in my blog uh, for that. So uh, the Silata uh, scarf or Silen scarf, if you want to have the pattern by itself on Ravelry and you don't, you don't want to have the ebook, 
calls for um, calls for. Let me see that. Uh, right now, I have it uh, uh, just before my eyes. Uh, so uh, the yarn that it calls for is uh, uh, in the pattern. I oh, I don't have it right here. In the pattern, it's BC Garn. I think um, I think I have it somewhere. Let me just just uh, check, and I will be back. So you see, even though I try to prepare everything in advance and I'm a teacher, so I know how to prepare, at least I hope so, I always forget things I'm going to be talking about and to have it uh, on my eye hand or, uh, you know, uh, some, from where, somewhere on my computer, I can have a quick look to check if I'm not uh, mistaken. So, okay, um, so uh, the Silata scarf on uh, the uh, ensemble book calls for BC Garn Hamilton Tweed 1, which is 100 uh, meter per 50 grams. Uh, this is what exactly the Fonti Polaire is, 100 meter per 50 grams. So I got the exact quantity that was uh, called for in the pattern. So that was six skins. Uh, but once I knitted one repeat and you have 15 repeats of them in one car scarf, I realized I was going to be needing probably 11 skins. Uh, as I said, I do not know where, um, what happened where either my calculation went wrong and I have the same uh, gauge for the swatch, for the pattern itself, the knitted pattern itself. Whenever I measure, measure the scarf, it has the right width. And if I make the proper calculation for one repeat and uh, for the 15 repeats of them for the finished scarf, it's, it's going to have the right length. So I think I'm uh, on gauge for both uh, the swatch and the knitted object, but I will need to add as much yarn. So I called Fonti, they sent me, uh, so I got the very last four skins they had, uh, uh, five skins they had, I'm, I'm, I do not recall, but I, I think I had the last skins for this uh, very uh, dye lot for the blue one. So I have 11 skins, I hope it's going to be enough. If, it's, if I see it's not going to be enough, I'll do one repeat less than what the pattern calls for. That's all I am going to do. And I have uh, 11, 12 skins for uh, the gray colorway because I will, one, for one, I like to have a bit more than running out of yarn. Uh, playing yarn chicken is something I'm not good at. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> it stresses me out. So I'd rather have a bit more than a bit too few, too, too late, a bit not not enough yarn on hand to finish the project. And uh, also I'm collecting yarn of this yarn weight and I see what I'm going to do with it. There are several uh, shawls. I have a couple books from Stephen West. And there are several shawls that uh, I can use bits uh, of uh, leftovers that I have here and there, a skin here and a skin there. Um, and I like the idea to finish all my uh, remaining yarn in, in a scarf or a, a, a shawl or something else that will be a, um, some kind of an object that will recall and remind me of all the other knits that um, I knitted with these yarns. Anyway, these scarves are taking a very long time. Um, when did I start? Uh, when did I start my project? Uh, I started, oh, I did not save the date. Uh, mm, 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 mm. This is quite a long time ago in my, ah, I did not start the date. So I will have to see for the pictures whenever, but I think it's, it's been over two weeks now, maybe three weeks. Uh, when maybe I can see whenever I finished uh, my uh, Paulin's Bini, uh, whenever I finished it, of October 7th. So I started the, the scarves 
uh, right after that. Uh, so it's been over three weeks I've been knitting um, these two scarves. It's taking forever, maybe because I'm knitting two at a time. And, you know, I uh, take, it's taking on the spot as, twice as much, but in the end, I think I'm going to be taking the exact same amount of time. Um, I had to read back because I had a bit of a difficulty to memorize and see where the pattern was going from just the beginning. So I had to read back and start over again, but that's fine. Now I, I've understood how the pattern works so I am following the pattern just to make sure I make no mistakes whenever you know the slip stitches patterns and increases and decreases uh, change but uh, anyway for now um, it's it's an easy knit for now and uh, uh, so the only thing that uh, I had to be careful about uh, and this is also one reason I read back a couple rows on one of the scarves is that I need to take uh, the project back where I left it for both scarves. And I know that ev every, um, uh, every even row I start uh, with the blue. So uh, that's something I, I, I know. And uh, um, I, it's not, you know, I usually try to stop whenever both colors, both scarves are at the same point, so that I start for both scarves at the same point. But sometimes, you know, I can't, it's, it's not possible. So I place a little stitch marker uh, wherever I need to pick up my project again, because, you know, one time I <laughs> did not pick it up on the right side for the right color for the right scarf and I had a bit of problems. So here is up, sorry. Up, okay, Hamses, who is my uh, uh, Farron baby cat, he's not a baby anymore, but it's my youngest cat, uh, went in front of the camera. So that is uh, what I'm working on, on right now. Uh, I've done uh, two and a half repeats in three weeks. So I have, uh, if I want them to be finished by Christmas and there are 15 repeats of them, um, I need to uh, start knitting on a consistent way every night, every night. And uh, uh, I'm not always knitting at night because if I'm too tired or I, I, you know, I finish my work too late, just eat and do other things. So I need now to have a regular schedule to knit every day on them because otherwise I won't be finished for Christmas. I know they will understand, but anyway. Uh, so that's the only thing I'm working on. My two other uh, projects that I'm working on, on uh, the uh, fishbone sweater and the Lorenzon sweater are in their bag. They are waiting that I'm, I'm done with that. Okay, so that's my only work in progress besides my two other projects that I'm just waiting, I have enough time. And so one, I want the scarves to be finished by Christmas. And two, as I said on several occasions, I'm a monogamous knitter. I, I'm not comfortable having several projects in my mind. Um, so uh, this is one reason why uh, I don't know if she's my oldest cat is going to be patient enough for me to finish before I open uh, the door to her. I think I will have to go to open the door because she's a very good cat and I don't want she goes impatient with me. So I'm, I'm, I'll be back. Okay. So she's out. And uh, um, what was I saying? Yes, I, I'm, I'm a very monogamous knitter. I can't have my head full of several projects. I know people, some people like to have several projects in their mind and, you know, knit an easy one whenever they can, you know, they need an easy knit and uh, knit uh, more complicated and have, you know, many things before them to choose from uh, to knit. Whenever I have several projects uh, uh, going at the same time, it's 
usually a very easy one and a more complicated one. But that's all I can manage. I can't, and I don't like uh, not to concentrate on the pattern because then, you know, I like to understand the pattern and I like to go where the designer decided it wanted to go. And uh, for that, I can't have too many patterns in my mind at the same time. So I, I'm, I'm, I like to need one thing, finish it and go to the next. And maybe, you know, at the end of the first one, start the other project, but not whenever I'm full in and I, I'm full of the pattern that takes up all my mind space. Uh, anyway, so uh, this is all for me for now. Um, the last uh, thing I want to talk about uh, is a stash acquisition. Stash acquisition. I'm not sure how you say that. Um, I was waiting on some other uh, Dererum Natura uh, uh, colorways to be available. So you probably know that um, I'm waiting. I've been waiting for almost a year now, and I think uh, we we will have the yarn available either at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. Uh, some Dererum Natura yarn from so the Ulysse uh, yarn on some other colorways that I want to use in uh, my second uh, half and half uh, wrap from Pearl Soho. So the cal will be finished uh, from Cadillac Smith. Anyway, I'm still going to knit it because the one thing I had in mind to do with the second version of the half and half, half and half wrap, uh, half and half wrap uh, is still, uh, you know, is still something that talks to me, so uh, I will do it. I'm waiting on the second colorway from the Ulysse that has been unavailable for over a year now. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm sus subscribed to uh, Derehome Natura's uh, mailing list and I have alerts uh, on their site for uh, special, specific colorways I'm waiting on. And the Gilead colorway in Boulot uh, in Boulot, uh, is, uh, uh, went available last week. So uh, I was waiting on this specific colorway that is a very light gray. There is a, you can't see it on camera, I think. Maybe you can, I do not know. Um, it's a gray, so it's a colder uh, tone of gray, you know, light gray and with very faint uh, parts of, uh, darker gray, but there is a yellow tone in it. It's a cool gray, but it has some kind of a yellow tone. It's a very, very specific um, color. And I was waiting on this one uh, because I want to need the uh, um, Shubasco sweater. So the Shubasco sweater, uh, wherever I uh, have it, uh, um, here uh, is uh, from ooh, 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 is from she's gonna be mad at me because I'm not I do not recall her name uh, Kate Barrios so um, the Shubasco sweater I'm gonna place pictures uh, the part of the sweater reminds me very much of this pattern from uh, the Sotabosk shawl. And when I saw it, uh, the pattern is from this summer, has been released this summer. When I saw it, I thought uh, they would vibe, ve vibe very much, very well together. Uh, because part of the sweater reminds me of this part of the uh, designs on the Sotabosk shawl. And, you know, this is a cool, uh, pink that has some uh, gray uh, gray specks, very very small specks, very small fades in it. Um, so this is um, a gray. The, the same specks are in almost the same specks are in the Boulot colorway that are in the uh, quartz colorway, and the design. Uh, will you know will go together I think they will echo so if if I if I find it's too much I won't wear them together of course 
but uh, uh, as I as much I, I like this part of the Sotabosk uh, shawl, I when I saw as soon as I saw the uh, Shubasco sweater, I I got the pattern because I uh, uh, I like the look uh, of this sweater very much and. Uh, uh, once again, this yarn is the same yardage and the same weight uh, that what she's calling for. It's knitted with the same kind of needles because here it says uh, uh, four to five uh, millimeter needle. The pattern has been, the sample has been knitted with uh, four millimeters needles. So there are several sizes and I think that even if I need to adjust my needle size and I'm not quite on gauge, I will. I will find my way around that. So uh, this is what the uh, Gilead in uh, Boulot is for. And uh, um, I think it's going to be, I liked the pictures she, she's posted. It's a bit the same, the same colorway, light gray. So, uh, you know, this is going to be one more project that I will have to find time for it. But anyway, all of this yarn is waiting in boxes in my room uh, that I have enough time to, to go to it and, and, and to go to them and take care of them and, and uh, have some knitting with them. And in the meantime, I just think about them and I, you know, imagine the finished objects uh, while I'm uh, um, knitting on my current project. So that is it for today. I have no idea how long I've been talking because I've been interrupted several times. I hope it's not been too long. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, what I'm bringing you. Uh, I like to read your comments. And uh, uh, so please comment down below whenever you feel like it. Please subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I post uh, a new video and uh, in the meantime be happy find happiness in your own needs for place actively place happiness in your life because if you don't do it it's not going to come on its own like that so uh, be happy happy knitting and i will see you most probably next week have a good week <laughs>